questions for reflection. Today's first reading explores the use of our human freedom, which reflects the very image of God in us, and sin, which is an abuse of freedom, choosing against God, against what is good and true and beautiful and noble. God has given us the freedom to choose, but with choice comes the option to abuse our freedom and sin. In this particular position of Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome, he is focusing on the abuse of our bodies and disordered passions. Our bodies are us. We are meant to be a composite, body, soul, and spirit, a person. But original sin separated us from God, from one another, and within. And every sin leads to further separation. But God's grace, fully given in the Paschal mystery, the saving birth and life, saving death and resurrection of Jesus, the Christ, reunites us. When we give ourselves to God, that is, to become Christians, we are called to take full advantage of our freedom by choosing to live in grace, cooperating with God rather than sin, rebelling against Him. In fact, we are obligated to do so. This is what it means when Paul explains we have chosen uprightness as our master. In choosing to serve the Lord, we have realigned our freedom with the truth, and we find it once again. Our responsorial psalm makes it clear. The saving power of God is what preserved the nation of Israel when it was under attack by its enemies. Indeed, the nation of Israel continues to be restored and saved, despite the threats around it. Likewise, we are the same. We are surrounded by all kinds of danger, and if not for God's protection, we would not be able to withstand it. So let us be thankful that God looks after us, for without Him, we can do nothing. Today's Gospel is another warning from the Lord, explaining to us how we must live, precisely because we are stewards, chosen by the Lord, entrusted with His creation, and the ongoing mission of the Church. We are no longer our own, as the Apostle Paul was fond of saying. We were, quote, bought with a price. That's 1 Corinthians 6.20 and 7.23. As Christians, we're entrusted to properly use what God has given us for the benefit of all people. We don't know when we will be called to give an accounting for our decisions, so we must always be ready to do so. Let's keep the commandments, loving God above all others and loving all others as ourself. Let us receive the goods of the earth as entrusted to us and bear fruit that remains. Let us live this way so when the Master does arrive, He finds us doing exactly what He asked. And we can hear those words for which our hearts long, well done, good and faithful servant. Welcome into the joy of your Master. That's in Matthew 25, 21.